everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we are going to talk about my favorite Prismacolor highlight colors. And I'm going to use some of those colors in a couple different combinations just to demonstrate to you how they work well with different colors. I'm going to try to show you some of the highlight colors that I use in particular color families, like say if I'm coloring with blues, what color I like to use as my highlight color. And if I'm coloring with like oranges and yellows and kind of in that range, my favorite colors that I use in that color range that just kind of really make the images on my coloring page pop. If you're interested in learning more about my favorite Prismacolor highlight colors and how I make all of my images on my coloring pages just really stand out and look really vibrant and just really pop. Stay tuned for this video. Also make sure that you subscribe to my channel and turn your bell notifications on so that you're always notified every time I post a new video. And if you like this video, please do make sure that you give it a thumbs up because that really helps my channel out a lot. If you check the description box below, down there you will find a link to everything that I show you in this video, as well as a link to my Facebook group and also a link to sign up for my email list. If you sign up for my email list, you will receive a color swatching chart back in your email for free so that you can swatch all of your color pencil sets. And I am also on Patreon if you would like to support me over there. Let's go ahead and get into this video. I thought that we would start the video off with blues because blue is one of my favorite colors and I find that I use it a lot in my coloring pages. When I say blues, I don't necessarily just mean your typical blue. I mean the other blues as well, like the blue greens, like the teals and the turquoise and colors of that sort. This is one of my absolute favorite blue highlight colors. And this one is the sky blue light. I really, really love this color. Another one that you can use for highlights is also this powder blue, which I really, really love. I would also love for you guys to go to the comments below as I'm doing this video or as you come up with ideas, and maybe we could kind of make the comments section a little bit interactive where we kind of share our favorite highlight colors or even our favorite uh, Prismacolor color combinations down there in the comments. Let me know what your favorite color combinations are and what highlight colors you like to use with those to just really make everything come together and give it that extra amount of pop. I grabbed a couple colors and I just want to kind of show you how they would work together and how you would make this highlight color really just make things really kind of pop off the page. And so I've got a mid-tone color and my favorite highlight color, and then I have a darker color, but I didn't go too dark. So this is denim blue, and then I have blue, or yeah, blue lake. So let's go ahead and start with our darkest color, and I'm just gonna lay a little bit of that down here. And then I'm gonna come back with my next color, which is the blue lake. And I'm going to pull that down just a little bit more. And then I'm going to come in with the powder blue. And see how that is, I don't know, this one is not as bright. This one is kind of more of a muted blue. But it is still a great color to use for your highlights. But if I come back, you can see, you'll be able to see how much this just kind of pops out when I come back and I add the rest of my colors and finish out this rectangle here. And you can see the variance of colors. Now, when you're using your highlight colors, you don't necessarily need to just use your highlight colors just in that highlighted area. You can come back and you can use your highlight colors instead of using white. I know I talk a lot about using white for your, um, you know, for burnishing and kind of pulling all your colors together. But if you don't want that white waxy film that ends up coming up over your colors and kind of lightening your colors up, always use your highlight color in that case 
to just kind of come over everything. And you'll see like in my most recent videos, I've talked about blending colors. And this kind of blends the colors to create a different color as well. So you could kind of experiment with that and see what you can come up with. It does lighten it up a little bit, but it's not going to put that white film over the top of it. It's just going to kind of bring the colors together. And it does lighten it up a little bit, but I wouldn't really call it lightening up. It's kind of a blend of the two different colors. As you can see, they've just kind of been blended together to change the color. So if I come back and I lay some of that darker color back, that's going to add more dimension and depth to my combination. And then you can always come back with your other colors and you could pull it down and you can do the same thing. And then come back with your highlight color and you can see what a gorgeous color this is. Now, if I wanted to try this one again, let's go ahead and now try the... Um, the sky blue light and let's see what the difference is if we use these same colors so if I came back here and I just laid the colors down again and I'm going to try to do this quickly and just kind of spread the colors not be very artistic about it just because I want to show you the difference in these two colors And this is kind of an experiment for me too because I've never really put the two highlight colors up next to one another to really see the difference. And this one is going to be a brighter blue. So this is a really great one if you want things to really kind of just pop off your page. Again, you could see the difference here between the two colors, but this is gonna be the color that you want to use if you really want your image to pop. This is a great highlight color, but this is more of a muted color. And you can kind of tell by looking at them now that they are laid down right next to one another. And I'm coming back and just gonna put some more of that down. And then more of my darkest color. I believe this was the denim blue. Is that what I said? Yeah, this is the denim blue. And you can also see the difference here. See how these colors were blended together, these two colors, and they created a whole different color. You could see the difference in these two colors here because this is the color blend between the denim blue and the powder blue, and it just really lightened it up and made it much brighter, if you could see that. Isn't that so cool? And then over here, we have the actual denim blue where we did not put anything over it. So that was another video I was gonna be doing here in the future where I show you some different color blends that you can come up with. But I think in this video, we're probably going to discover some. And that is great because I love when my videos turn into not just one, you know, like they st my videos kind of sometimes start out one way and then I get into showing you guys something and then we end up getting another lesson out of whatever that lesson was. And I find that really, really cool. So if I come back down here and I put this one back in, this is my blue lake. I'm adding a little bit more of that. Now see, if you notice, these never had the highlight color put over them. And this is a much brighter color, like I said, than this one, because this is a more muted, what was that, the powder blue is more muted. And this one, this color, as you can tell, that there's hardly none left of it. This is my absolute favorite blue highlight color. This is another great option, but this one is my absolute favorite. Now, if I come back over all of this and try to create that color blend too, let's see what happens. So I'm coming back over this and look, see, I just created a whole nother color. Look how this one kind of stays darker. It lightens it up just a tad, but not as much as it did over here. So this is our denim blue. This is also our denim blue, but I went over this one with the sky blue light, and then I came back and went over this one with the powder blue. So can you see, like, you may have 
this is this is what I was showing you in like some of my previous videos where I showed you guys tips and tricks. Um, and there's like four videos of that in the series. If you haven't seen those, go back and watch those because they're really useful videos for anybody at any level, not necessarily just beginners. But you may have, or look at your Prismacolor 150 set, and you may see 20 different shades of blue. But you don't just have 20 different shades of blue. You have so many more shades of blue than that because this is the perfect example. If you look at this, you can see that this is denim blue, this is denim blue. But this denim blue is blended with a different color than this denim blue is blended with. And this one is brighter and this one is more muted, so that's why it is going to change the color and make it a completely different color. It lightened it up a little bit and it added some brightness to it, but this one, when I added the um, powder blue to it, it really brightened up that denim blue, but it's a more muted color. So unless you experimented with these, you would never even know what is going to happen. But I think that we are together discovering some really cool things. So those are two color combinations which look really great together. And then I've got the muted blue, which was the powder blue, and the brighter blue, which was the sky blue light. Those are my two favorite blues that I use when I am combining blues. Remember earlier when I was talking about where I like to use some, not necessarily just stay in the same color family, where I'm using blues that are just blues per se, or like, you know, that would look like, more like the primary color blue. I like to also use blues when I am using colors that kind of have like, that are like a blue-green color. So these colors, the um, aquamarine, this also has some blue in it. And when I use my aqua type colors or my turquoise type colors, I love, love, love to use this um, sky, sky blue light. So I'm gonna show you how that looks. Let me go ahead and lay down some of the darkest color. This one is aquamarine. And I'm not going too dark here. Usually when I'm doing color combinations, there is another color that I like to add into this and I may show you that after I get these laid down but that is my aquamarine and then this one is my light aqua so let's add this one in just a little bit now there's not a huge difference between these two colors and again that's all dependent upon the pressure that you have uh, behind your pencil because like I told you guys in previous videos too dependent upon the pressure that you put on your pencil you can create different variations of that one color there are so many things that you can do with your colored pencils and I could probably go on and on and on and make video after video after video which I do <laughs> but I would probably like to do another video for you guys too showing you also the different variations of the color you can get from just one color by using your pencil differently. And I do write down all these different video ideas just in case you were wondering. Anytime you guys give me ideas in the comments too, I also write all of those down because I want to bring you guys the content that you want to see. So even though these two colors, the aquamarine and the light aqua, even though there is not that much of a variance between these two, like I said earlier, you add more layers and you use a little bit harder pressure, you can change that drastically. So if I come back and I pull this through just a little bit, and now I'm going to come back with my sky blue light. And look how pretty these are together. Is that not the coolest highlight color for this combination? I mean, this does kind of go along with my tips and tricks, but I'm not going to add that, I don't think, to this to that series. 
because I really want people to be able to find this video when they're looking for videos where they're trying to discover the best highlight colors and color combinations and things of that sort. But look how cool that is. Now I used this sky blue light on this color combination and on this color combination. But look how when I laid it down here, it almost just changes the look of the actual color because you put it with blues that have a lot more green in them. But you can keep coming back and kind of blending these through and adding more of that color and again like I showed you before if you come over with this blue color and you go over your other colors like you're actually going to create a different color and then you can all always come back with your darkest color and you can add more of that back in if you wanted to see your color again so it all depends on what you want to do and when you're working on your coloring page or an art piece or whatever it is you're doing with your colored pencils you just kind of figure it out as you go like if I wanted to add more depth and dimension to this box I could just keep on shading like this and give this a whole different look just by adding some more of the darker color and you see how that just created a little bit of dimension to my box but yeah, see, there's lessons in every single video, more than what it is that I'm just trying to show you. <laughs> so let's go ahead and try some other color combinations. Now that we've done some of my favorite highlight colors for blues or colors in the blue range and, um, you know, the little bit of the green with the blue and the teals, let's go ahead and move on to my favorite highlight color when I'm working with oranges or shades that have orange in them. So my absolute favorite to use with oranges is this Deco Peach. This is an absolutely amazing color and it just really makes things really pop off the page. I have paired the Deco Peach with the Pale Vermilion and then I grabbed this permanent red. Now, yes, this is a red and it has red in the name, but this permanent red has a lot of orange in it. And I don't know, let me hold it closer to the camera so you can see that, but it's not really a true red. It has a lot of orange in it. So we're gonna go ahead and use these three colors and I'm gonna show you exactly how they look together, so. What did I do before? Start out with the darkest? Yeah. So we're going to lay down the permanent red. And I'm going to do that at the top. And I'm going to do it again at the bottom. Now I'm going to come in with my pale vermilion. And can you see the difference in the variance of these two colors? This one looks red, but it has a lot of orange in it, so it looks like a much deeper orange, more so than a red, to me anyway. And again, that all depends on the pressure you have behind your uh, pencil and how many layers you're laying down and things of that sort, just like I said earlier. And then I'm going to come in with my favorite highlight color, which is my Deco Peach. You guys have seen me use this color in a lot of my color alongs because this is one of my absolute favorite colors. And again, you could probably tell because it is so short. So let me come back in and shade in a little bit more with my darker orange or permanent red, what they like to call it. And then let's lay a little bit more of the pale vermilion and kind of pull that into our highlight color, our deco peach. And I'm just kind of blending these together. And then I'm going to come back in a more circular motion and I really want to try to blend these out with the deco peach because these two colors, if you can see, they look gorgeous together. Now, remember what I told you earlier 
about blending the colors and we're going to try a little bit of that now because I'm going to use this. Let me go ahead and lay a little bit more like another layer of this permanent red so I could fill a little bit more of the white. And then I'm going to lay a little bit more of this color. This is a gorgeous orange. This pale vermilion. I love this color. And I don't use it that often. That's why it's still so long because I don't know. I don't I tend to really not use a whole lot of a lot of the oranges in my set. Now, I'm going to come back in here and I'm going to go in a circular motion and I'm going to go over this permanent red and let's see how the color changes. See how it just kind of brightens it up a little bit? Oh, it actually makes it look a little bit pink. Do you see that? Oh my gosh. <laughs> so if I look at this compared to this, when I put the uh, Deco Peach over this permanent red, it actually makes it look very corally pink. It looks like more like a coral color than it does down here. Let me go ahead and do a little test here and come back over this with the permanent red and lay another layer. And see, the more layers you lay down, you're going to get it to look even more red like it is called permanent red. So it's going to look even more red. Of course, it still does look like it has orange in it. But look at the difference in these colors. Do you see how I created something completely different just by burnishing this out or going over it again and blending these two colors together? But then I have a completely other color down here, or a completely different color down here, if I just go over the permanent red and add a couple more layers. But look at what you can do with these pencils. Like this is what I've been trying to uh, show you guys like in some of my previous videos, or specifically my tips and tricks videos, some of these amazing things that you can do with the Prismacolor pencils are not even necessarily just with the Prismacolors, but really with any set of colored pencils. Now, your more budget-friendly pencils, they may not blend together as well as some of the artist grade pencils such as the polychromos and your prismacolors and i will still say that the prismacolors they're going to blend the best the absolute best i think out of any other pencils unless you want to get into and you can afford to have yourself a set of luminance because those go down on the paper like an absolute dream like i did over here with the blues and i showed you two different highlight colors and then how we can add the highlight colors here and blend them together and create other colors. I want to do the same thing here with the orange. So another one of my absolute favorite highlight colors is the light peach. I know we all see a lot of colorists and artists using the light peach specifically for skin, but this is also a great highlight color. I don't want any of you to ever think that like if it says peach on it, even like your regular peach or like the light peach or the deco peach or like any of those, those are not necessarily, just because they're called peach, they're not necessarily quote unquote skin colors. You can use them for other things. And this is actually a really gorgeous color. So I'm gonna go ahead and take out the deco peach that I was using before. And I'm going to combine the peach with the same two colors as I did in this one. And we are going to see the differences just like we did in the previous examples. So let me go ahead and lay down my permanent red. I'm gonna lay my permanent red here and then I'm gonna come down here and lay more permanent red. And then I've got my vermilion. And we're just pulling that down a little bit with the vermilion. And now I'm going to come in with my light peach. And see, this is a more muted color. The deco peach is much more, or much more so a brighter color. But this is still a really pretty color. And yes, it is a color that I generally use when I'm coloring skin, but it's not just for skin. So let's go ahead and lay down a little bit more of our mid-tone. And then I'm gonna come back with the permanent red 
and come back over this again. Now if you could see the difference, you could tell that the, where the deco peach was, it was much brighter. And then over here we used all the same colors, but we substituted it with the light peach. And the light peach is still a very light, light color, and it's still going to give you that pop, but it's not going to be as bright. It's more of a muted color. Just like over here, where we did the two different, um, what was it, the powder blue and then the sky blue light. The sky blue light, I think, was the much brighter blue, and then the uh, cloud blue or the powder blue, I think is what we used, was the much more muted blue. So when you're using highlight colors, you have a choice. You kind of have to decide whether or not whatever the object on the page is that you're coloring, do you really want it to just like really pop off the page? You want a color that is just really going to be like pow, like somebody looks at it and it's just really gonna stand out because the color is much brighter? Or do you want something to just kind of blend in and lay on the page nicely and everything just kind of flow? Then you would go with a more muted highlight color. So let's come in here and we're just gonna pull some of this down into the peach a little bit more. The light peach, I think is what this was. And we're gonna blend these two together. And we're gonna come back and do the same thing over here. Now, if I wanted to, like, you guys have seen like a lot of times when I'm coloring, I won't necessarily go into the darker color. Like a lot of people when they're blending their colors, they will go over the whole entire thing and then back over the whole entire thing with like their darker color or whatever it is they're coloring. And they'll just keep going over it with the other colors. When you do that, you're blending colors. But if you want the true color from whatever the color is and you don't want to blend your colors, then you're not going to go back and blend those colors together. So that's just a little word of advice that is helpful. But now I'm gonna come back and I'm just gonna go over this and look how pretty this light peach is. But see, it is more muted. Now if I come back over here and I go back over this other one, I didn't exactly burnish it out, but if I come back here and I add a little bit more of this deco peach, you can see the difference in these. And I really think this one, it looks like it has a little bit more pink in it, or maybe it's because I pulled some of the colors through a little bit more, and I don't have as many layers over here on this side. Let's go ahead and darken up our permanent red. And then darken it up over here. And I think I want to do the same trick on this one that I did over here where I blended the colors together so I could see the difference and how it changes it. So let's go ahead and pull this down a little bit more. And in this case, I actually went over the whole thing. I didn't do that in the last one, I don't think. But I'm trying to kind of pull these colors together, not necessarily where just the blend line is, but I'm going over the whole thing in, in this uh, box here. So you could change your colors even more because if I just blended and went over two colors here, rather than taking my highlight color and going over the whole thing, I mean, it just goes to show that you can make so many different colors. Like you may have 150 colors in your Prisma set if you have the 150 set, but you have so many more colors than that. Now let me come back over here like I did over here and I'm going to use this color to go over the permanent red and we're going to see what color it turns it. Now look how neat that is because it doesn't look like here. It looks very corally and here it still looks a little bit darker. And they are actually two different shades. You have to look really closely to be able to tell, but it looks like I didn't put as much over here because I still see like a lot of white spots and I probably burnished in a little bit more on this side. But if I continue to pull it all through and I go over this part again, the colors are very similar, but they're still different at the same time. They are very close though, but if you look at this and then you look at this, it looks actually it looks like this is darker, but that may have to do with the layers that I laid down. But if you look at this and you look at this, this was the permanent red 
where I laid a couple layers down. I probably have more layers here, so this is even darker on this side than it is on this side. But do you see the difference in the varia variations of the colors that you could create with your colored pencil sets? Like here I laid down more layers, so it was a darker red. Here I laid down less layers, so the red is a little bit lighter with a little bit of the white showing through. You could do so many different things with these pencils and create so many different looks. And this here looks a little bit more muted the uh, light peach and then the deco peach looks like it has more pink in it so I would say that this one is brighter that's gonna be the brighter of the two but they're both really good colors they're both really really great colors to use with any orange on any coloring page I have one more highlight color that I want to show you and this is my absolute favorite highlight color that it's just, it's my absolute favorite. Actually, there's one more that's my absolute favorite, but I'm not sure that I'll be able to fit that one in this video. If you want to see me do another video of my favorite highlight colors and show you some different combinations they can go in, then let me know in the comments below. But I'm going to do this combination and show you the different pinks and show you how this one blends in. And I'm going to do the same thing I did with the blues and the oranges. And I think that I might even try another color that I really really love to show you the differences so let's go ahead and I have process red of course it's called red again but you can see that it has a lot of pink in it it even looks purpley but it is within the pink range so I'm gonna lay some of that down there then I'm gonna come back with my pink this is just the regular straight up pink and I'm gonna pull this through and then I'm gonna come back with this beautiful deco pink and I'm just gonna fill the center in now I'm gonna come back and add more of my process red this is a gorgeous color. I love the process red. I use this all the time. You guys can probably tell the colors I use all the time because you can see by the length of my pencils. <laughs> I actually have two of this pencil sitting in my set because I love that color so much. I use it on flowers. I love using that color on flowers. Okay, so we're going to pull the pink through a little bit more. And then we're going to come back again with our deco pink. Okay, so there's what those colors look like together. And I would like to do the same thing that I did in the other one so we could see with the blend of color how the color changes. So let me add one more layer of the process red. And I'm going to add one more layer of the process red down here. I'm going in a circular motion so I could kind of fill in some of that white this time. And then I'm going to come back in a circular motion again and I'm going to go just where the pink is. And then I'm going to do the same thing down here and go just where the pink is. And then I'm going to come back with my deco pink and I'm going to kind of try to pull some of that down. Okay, so we've got all these gorgeous colors laid down on the paper. Now we are going to come back with our deco pink and we're going to go over the process red and we're going to see how much it changes the color. So I'm going to kind of go just in a circular motion. And so we'll have the bottom portion to be able to compare it to. So this is just blending the two colors together. And look how pretty that is too because it just straight up like blended it right into where the pink is. It not only changed the color and gave us a little bit of a different shade, but it's kind of blending everything really well. And that is what is called burnishing. When you just kind of bring all the colors together like that and get rid of all the way to the paper. But... If you didn't want to do that and you wanted to just keep your process red at the same strength that it was as far as you know the darkness you could just come back in here 
and you can add more and then I can even come back with my pink and if I wanted to I could even use the pink to try to burnish everything out instead of using my lightest color which is the deco pink but look at the difference do you see how I have all different colors here let me go ahead and come back over the center with this deco pink and kind of really get rid of a lot of that white but look how cool that is like if we look at this this right here is the process red this is also the process red but this is the process red blended over and burnished out with the deco pink and look at the difference in the variance of the colors it just really lightened it up now you can do this like I said by going over and blending the colors together you could even blend all three colors together and go over all of this with the pink and that would lighten it up even more and then over it again to burnish it out with the deco pink and it just all blends together really really nicely especially on this paper if you're wondering which paper I'm using this is actually the Spring Hill paper that I love so much it will be linked down in the description bar below but here we have the process right again and look how dark and vibrant it is so you can really go for any look that you want and you can get different levels of color out of every single pencil in your set dependent upon the pressure that you use and the um, colors that you blend together and you can really do whatever you would like and create whatever colors you want even if it's not just putting colors together and creating color combinations you can get so many more color combinations when you think outside of the box rather than just concentrating on the actual color that you see or the original color that you see when you lay your pencil down onto the paper there is just so much more to be created so let me try something a little bit different in this next box and we're going to stick with the pinks and I am going to use a different color I'm going to bring in my salmon pink it may have some pink in it but it has a lot of orange in it too or like a peachy kind of tone and it is a beautiful color it's another one of my favorite highlight colors and we're going to see by using the same colors but switching out the highlight color what we could come up with okay, so let's go ahead and just lay down the process red and then we're going to lay down more process red here then we're going to come back with the pink just like we did before And then we're going to save our center for that highlight color. Now look how pretty this color is. Oh, I am I'm in love with this color. But this color can be mixed with pinks. You can mix this color with reds. You can mix this color with yellows. You can mix it with oranges. Like I have literally mixed. This is actually, it looks like uh, I never used this one but this is probably my third one and just pulled from a brand new set of Prismacolors <laughs> because I use this one so much and you will see if you go back and watch my color alongs how much I actually use this color. It's one of my favorite colors in the set. Okay, so we're gonna go back and we're gonna lay down more of our process red and I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna lay down more of the process red again and then I am going to put more pink and more pink and this time I'm kind of going over that process red with my pink and I'm trying to just kind of get in here to the blend line where it's meeting that um, that salmon pink so let's come back in and add more set look how that just pops is that not beautiful oh I love this color so much now let's do what we did in the other ones and I'm gonna take this salmon pink and I'm gonna lay it over this process red and we're gonna see what happens 
So let's see how it changes the color. Wow, it almost makes it like look fluorescent-y like. <laughs> that is so cool. So I'm gonna blend in a little bit more of my process red. And then I'm gonna come back and lay a little bit more of this. But look at that color I just created. See, it's all about just like experimenting with your colors to see what you can come up with. Let me go ahead and add more of the pink in here. And just kind of blend all that out. And then let's pull it down a little bit more. And I'm going to leave this side just the way it is, but do you see the differences? Like this is the process red just alone. This is process red again with many more layers. This is pink with not a whole lot of layers. This is pink with a lot of layers mixed in with other colors. And then this is pink, I believe, just kind of by itself, probably gone over a little bit with the deco pink. But isn't that not the coolest thing? These are all the colors we're going to do today. I have a few more that I wanted to show you, but I think that this video has um, gone on as long as I want it to. And I have quite a few others. Like I want to be able to show you guys greens because I've got some really favorite greens that are absolutely beautiful and they are great colors for leaves. And so I wanted to be able to show you those. And then purples, but yeah, I've got quite a few other highlight colors I wanted to be able to share with you. I actually have them sitting off to the side of my desk here. But let me know if you want me to bring you a part two of this video. I hope you enjoyed this video. Everything that I used in this video will be linked in the description box below. The Spring Hill paper that I love so much, as well as the 150 set of the um, Prismacolors. And as always, I always use my Doll 133 pencil sharpener, my favorite ever pencil sharpener. That will be linked down in the description bar below as well. I hope you all enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. Happy coloring. Bye.